Hello everyone and welcome to my video number eight which is about step three of GPD and that's storytelling. So you have reflected on what you would like to do and you've gone and um, observed and explored and gained data with informational interviews and maybe uh, shadowing a job or maybe coming up with your own initiatives. So meaningful engagements, you have collected those. But how do you relay all this information to the rest of the world? So step three is effective storytelling or strategic communications. And how do you do that? So you've done the reflection, you've done your meaningful engagements, informational interviews, maybe prototypes, and storytelling. And this is where we are at right now, which is storytelling. So meaningful engagements, <clears throat> I just want to clarify that it doesn't mean that you're going to go do an extra project on top of your already busy schedule. Okay, so it's not cramming more into your education, but it is making sure that you are, um, whatever you're doing is meaningful. So I'll get, illustrate with a story. I had a student who said, you know, I am in graduate school. I have, I'm a student council president. I'm on this committee, I have a part-time job, I also volunteering at a hospital, am I doing too much? And I said, well, yes, you are. And she said, well, I'm not sure what to cut out. And I told her, think of it as which engagement do you find meaning? Which engagement do you find impactful that you can make an impact? And that way you can say no to the ones that you feel that you're not making a high impact in. So that's how you would select. So don't cram more into it, but be very selective. Just pick one outside of the lab activity, or even if it's within the lab, maybe it's setting up a new collaboration. That's impactful. Obviously get the input from your supervisor, but coming up with those things that stay within research can also be meaningful engagement. Maybe coming up with a new student initiative that helps students communicate more effectively. Okay, a new student blog. Something that's incorporated in with your education is also going to help with your meaningful engagement. So step three, how do you tell your story? How do you face the world with your story? And here are some tools that I'll be going over. One is LinkedIn, business cards, your emails, networking, and the job application. So let's talk about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a professional networking site. I hope everyone is on LinkedIn. And there are workshops on campus, workshops everywhere that talk about the most effective way to use LinkedIn. And I highly recommend it for your professional life. And the one thing that I do want to um, illustrate or stress is that when you have a LinkedIn profile, make sure that under summary that you have what you've done in the past, what you're doing now, and what you hope for in the future. So that recruiters know where your interests lie and what your background is. And under your summary of your work experiences, make sure you have what we call the CAR statements or the impact statements that you've made during your research studies, during your extracurricular activities, all those things should be populated with the CAR statements or impact statements. Okay. Business cards. Everyone should have a business card. When you go to a conference, you should have a card that you can give to anyone that is interested in your work. If you're running a poster, and let's say a potential future postdoc advisor or fellow collaborator or industry professional stops at your poster, you want to be able to give out a card and then you collect their card and at the back of their card you write what you talked about. So within 24 hours, as soon as you get to your um, room, you're going to link them in or you're going to write them a thank you note saying thank you for stopping by my poster today. This is what we talked about. And that way you have an electronic history of where you met and what you talked about for future um, networking purposes. So what is going to be on a card? What is going to be on a student card? It's going to be your name, your lab address. It's going to be your phone number for your lab, your LinkedIn URL, and your email. And some students 
have sort of a branding logo. So for example, some student might say microbiology enthusiast, communications expert, and graphic designer. Maybe it's because they worked on the student magazine, but they're also a researcher. So if you have those interests in maybe three words, then people will know right away what your interests are in. Email. Email should be very professional. Um, I know we are in sort of this um, relaxation, well, relaxed conversational um, times with texting. And <clears throat> so we just have to um, think about professional emails in that every time you write one to your a network that you just met or to a colleague that may have a potential collaboration. You want it to be professional and you want to end with your email signature. So professional email, make sure the subject has a very succinct heading, job application underscore your name. So job application 492, whatever that job is, underscore your name. And then you have a very succinct message. Dear hiring manager, so-and-so, Attached is the application for this job. I look forward to hearing from you and your name with your email signature. And it's the same email signature that you want to have that we talked about in the informational interview uh, video, which was in video number seven. So you want to have your name, your lab address, your email, your LinkedIn URL, and any titles you have in the uh, content of the email. If you would like to talk about uh, something that is um, uh, maybe controversial or something that you're upset about, it's best that you ask for a meeting in person. And this should not be something that you vent over in, in an email. So networking. Many students tell me they're scared of networking. So I'm going to reframe that concept of networking into sharing stories. Sharing stories sounds less scary than this concept of networking. Networking feels like, oh, I don't know any of these people. Now I have to go and talk about what I do and make small talk. And I'm not very good at that. But if you think of it as sharing stories and you're finding other scientists, other people that have similar interests as you and trying to come up with a project together, you're, finding, you're, you're trying to find future collaborators or future partners, then that's a better way of framing it so it's not so scary. So what are these networking tips? In my next video, I'm going to be talking about specific tips from networking at conferences and networking at various places throughout your research career.